Today we're going to talk about token bonding curves. I want to talk about token bonding curves because it's a relatively new topic. There are, a lot, there are more and more projects experimenting on it, but also a lot of people don't understand what token bonding curves are or what, what they mean or how we can use them. So I thought, um, and all the videos out there can be quite technical sometimes, so I just want to start with an introduction, um, introductory video on token bonding curves to, get, to give you a sense of what it is, how you can use it, where to go with it. So this is the first of the three videos that I'll be putting out for token bonding curves. And token bonding curves are essentially you know, token prices with changing token supply. So token prices are a function of the token supply. When supply changes, the token prices changes. This is good because then it's a little bit more dynamic. It takes into consideration when your token, when your ecosystem grows, which means your tokens in the ecosystem is increasing, your token prices rises, which is really aligned with what we have been talking about a lot, which is how network effects really impact the value of your network, of your ecosystem, which implies that your value of your token grows because your network grows. And you know your network grows because your token supply grows. So it sounds very complicated, but don't worry, it's going to be very simple. I'm going to make it easy for you. And let's get started. Um, yes. So what is token bonding curve? Just explain like I'm 5, E-L-I-5. Very simply, as I mentioned, it's where your prices change because the supply of the tokens um, in increases or decreases, it changes. So as the word suggests, you need to have a curve. So we're going to start off with a very simple curve. We have, we have this curve and we call this curve a function. This function can change differently based on whatever, how complicated you want it to be, but we're going to make this a very simple function. A function is basically, um, how do you define this line? How do you draw this line? This line is drawn by y equals x. So when y is 10 and you draw a line across 10, touch this function line that you draw down, x is 10. And when you draw x is 20, you draw all the way up to this function line, you draw across, you get 20, and y is 20. So x equals y. This is how we draw the function. The other types of function that is available could be a quadratic function, like y equals x squared. So when y is 1, x will be 1. When y is 2, x will be 4. When y is 3, x will be 9. So that will look more like a, a well, and that will look more like a curve like that, like a quadratic function. And it could be, it could also be other types of curve, like it could be a sine curve, cosine curve, log linear curve. It really depends, but all we need to do is a curve. And I know when you think of curve, you think of curvy lines, but you know, a line is a curve as well. So it, it can, it's just a line that corresponds, that links the x axis, which is this horizontal line, with the y axis, axis with it, which is the vertical line. Okay, so now we get this basic of weight. What does it mean? As I mentioned, let's say we're looking at a token supply of 30. This line will, will tell us what's the price of the token, so of 40. So let's, we have a line that goes up 40, so from 40, we know that if I want to buy the 40th token, token number 40, because prices changes with the supply, right? So if I want to buy token 40, I draw a line up to this line, to the function line that we talked about just now, and I draw a line across, and the price is 40. So this is a very basic understanding of how the token price corresponds to the token supply. If I am doing 50, so I draw a line, I will draw a line up from 50 to buy the 50th yes, token, yeah? And I draw a line across, the price is 50. This is a very basic, um, straightforward answer to, to determine the relationship between the token supply as well as the token prices. And to get, and that's, that's just the, the 40th token, right? If I want to buy two tokens, so token 40 and token 41, I can't just say that, Token 40 is 40 bucks, so I'm just going to do 40 times 2 because I've got token 40 and token 41. No, because when you buy token 40, now the supply increases, so to the price of token 41 will be higher than token 40. So what do we do? So let's say we want to buy from token number 1, so 
you know, from zero, from the start, so onto my token number one, the first token, to the 40th token. I have to calculate all these little lines in between and add them up together. And if you did a little bit of basic um, math in school, if you remember them, that is basically just the area under the graph. So we can either integrate it via this function, or we can just, you know, find the area under the graph, which is half times 40 times 40. And then you get the area under the graph here, which is the, the summation of all these little points coming together. And that's the price of 40 tokens, the first 40 tokens. So token number 40 from 0 to 40. Or token number 1 to token number 40. And that's the area under the graph. So it's a lot easier to calculate as well. And it, it makes life a bit easier and a lot more intuitive. So what if we want to buy 10 tokens? Someone bought 40 tokens already. And I want to buy 10 tokens, which means I'm buying token 41 to token 50. That's 10 tokens. That means I will just, you know, using simple graph functions to find out the area under the graph here. And that will be the price I'm going to pay when I have when I buy additional 10 tokens. So I hope that's simple and that's, that's basic enough to get us started to just give you an understanding that this function is basically explaining the relationship between the token supply and the token price. And then the price you pay for, for buying additional tokens is the area under the graph.